Thank you. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee to inv uh, invite me for uh, this meeting. And I forgot to put a disclosure slides. I am co-founders of uh, Voyager Therapeutics and Aspa Therapeutics, and I have many patents licensed to uh, those two companies and many other pharmaceutical companies. So uh, what I would like to do is uh, first give you an overview of the gene therapy strategy because yesterday I heard CAR T cell and today and yesterday we heard about use AAV to accomplish uh, the gene therapy uh, strategy for uh, cure HIV or prevent HIV. So basically gene therapy, if you look at the strategy overall, there are two uh, strategies. One strategy called ex vivo, or in vivo, I'm sorry. In this case, you use a drug directly inject into human tissue and then accomplish uh, gene therapy applications. The next strategy is we discussed a lot, uh, we discussed a lot yesterday, that is strategy called ex vivo. So in this ex vivo strategy, you basically take out the human cells and infect this virus and expand it up this genetically modified uh, cells as a living drug and then give back to human. So this is a, like a hybrid view of the gene therapy. But exactly what approach is we can take for gene therapy? So the first approach is classic uh, gene therapy that is called gene replacement therapy. You deliver genes that has mutated into human tissue to replace the function. The second strategy called gene addition. So in this case, you add in gene into human cells to fight disease, such as uh, fighting HIV. And third strategy is you deliver silencing molecule by gene therapy and lock up the mutant cells and accomplish gene silencing. The final strategy is basically you use gene therapy to deliver genetic editing tools to fix mutations on, uh, inside of the cells on DNA itself. So what I'm gonna focus on or highly relevant to this scientific committee uh, is uh, use gene addition strategy to fight HIV. So basically in terms of gene therapy vectors, uh, I'm a gene therapist. My wish list is the following. What are the best for gene therapy? First is high efficiency. Second is long-term stability. Third is no immunogenicity and toxicity as compared to adenovirus, which is very toxic. And finally is no genotoxicity. That means non-integrating or episome. Those are my wish list. So actually, adenosociovirus has it all. So basically what you can see here is that you have a capsid, like just uh, uh, Hedengar gave a very nice uh, uh, description in that it determines tissue tropism, gene delivery efficiency, and regulate host immune response. Uh, so different AAV capsid have a different function in those three categories. And then you have your transgene carry there. There are two purposes here. One is because of the ITR, it forms uh, circularization or concatamerization, and then produce gene drug. So I want to, uh, yesterday I, I believe uh, Keith gave some uh, nice introduction, and today uh, Hedegaard also described this, but I'm gonna summarize it, use a simple cartoon, how exactly AAV accomplishes transduction. So first of all, you will have this receptor binding, different capsids will have different capability and binding to different receptor. And then you have this internalization process. Once you get to, into the cells, then you go through this endosome and um, uh, lysosome trafficking. Some virus, viruses will escape and, and be, eventually become degraded uh, in, in the lysosome, uh, proteasome. And some virus, it depends on different capsid, will enter the nucleus, once you enter the nucleus, then you will start encoding process, uh, and then you release your genome, oops, sorry, and release your genome, it could be self-complementary like Keith described, 
could be single stranded A with packaging positive or negative strand as equally, and then form double stranded. Then we start transcription and trans, uh, expression. However, the vector continue going to circularization to stabilize itself. Very few, very small percentage of ours become integrated, but majority is episome. And then you start expression and generate transgene uh, production. So that's the process. I mean, different capsids really play, have a different uh, uh, property or efficiency going through these intracellular trafficking steps. So, as I said, the vector the antibody use AAV, it's an attractive approach. So this is a gene addition strategy, adding uh, genes to find infectious disease. These have been proved, uh, proved effective by early days by Phil Johnson and by uh, uh, David Bartimore as well as by Jim Wilson. My collaborator Michael Farzan and Ron DeRoches recently also demonstrate application of AAV vector antibodies for HIV infection. So uh, Ron also showing that the anti-antibody response negatively impact the level and the duration of the AAV vector antibody in non-human primates. When you have a high antibody, anti-anti-antibody, then you have a low expression. When you lack of uh, the anti-anti response, you have a stable and a high level expression. So now we know the anti-anti response is a major barrier for a uh, vector antibody. Then let's look into how we can what are the barriers exist for vector antibody? So I think the process is complicated, but I'm going to summarize into four categories. First one is neutralizing antibody, blocking your transduction, pre-existing antibody blocking your transduction. Second is innate immune response at both capsid level and DNA level. And then next is going to be capsid or transgene degradation uh, and generate MHC uh, representation, uh, presentation and then CD8 T cell response. The another one is generating this transgene specific anti anti response. So now we know the barrier. What are the strategies to overcome those barriers for AAV mediated gene delivery? I'm not going to get into the first three categories. We know it's, uh, uh, it, people have been trying hard to overcome by those strategies. But highly relevant to this vector and antibody is a transgene immunity. So the key, I believe, to overcome transgene immunity is detargeting the transgene expression from antigen-presenting cells. You have different ways to do it. You can use a promoter, you can use a micron A, and you can use immune tolerance. So I'm going to get into those three categories. So to do this kind of study, we need a model system. And of course, do this in monkey will be very expensive for trying to do in mice. But the problem with mice is mice is very blunted in response to any AAV, any transgene, except the one that is called OVA. OVA, albumin transgene, is a very rare, one of the very rare transgene that can consistently uh, cause response in AAV media gene transfer in mouse. And then this can use for uh, modeling germline derived antibody in primates. So first we test this by using muscle specific promoter because the vector antibody usually delivered by muscle injection. And then what we found is yes, indeed, you can reduce anti anti response, but expression level is kind of low. Uh, so, so that's the first thing uh, we did at a transcription level. And then the, the conclusion here is it's, uh, this may not be practical, practical to deliver vector antibody. Then the next one we used is use a micron A detargeting from antigen presenting cells. It, it illustrated by this uh, work, if you do IV injection of AAV9, go everywhere, liver muscle and CNS. However, if you add in micron binding site to the 3 from UTR region, then recognized by those antigen specific or cell type specific microRNA will chop up and block the transduction. And so in the, uh, so, so that's the mechanism. And then we test this. And by doing this, 
uh, detargeting from liver and muscle use endogenous microRNA, we can accomplish cell type, tissue type specific expression. And the beauty of this is the microRNA binding size is only 24 base pair uh, each, so you have a space. And then we screen 26 different microRNAs uh, in vitro, looking for myoblast high and uh, APC low expression pattern, we identify a bunch of microRNAs. And then in collaboration uh, with Ron uh, DeRocious, we put basically two broad neutralizing antibody and with a mere 143 and a mere 126 um, binding site, and use this uh, to mix the antibody. And as uh, uh, David Ho's comments here, you basically inject it, you have two po possibilities. One get ADA, one without ADA. And then, as you can see, after this co-injection, you generate two antibodies, but, and most importantly, you kill, you kill all the viruses, and through adaptive transfer, you cannot see the virus anymore, and also only by culture, after a long time, you can see virus. So bottom line is wrong accomplished in this Miami monkey as suddenly alternative to a burning patients, and you can Establish a functional cure by micromanaged AAV, a micromanaged AAV vector construct for anti anti uh, uh, for antibody delivery. So now we know it works. We need to understand the mechanism. So then we go back to uh, EPO, uh, OVA model in mice. Basically, what we found is after you adding this micro, use one microRNA as an example. Well, after you add this, you have a consistent expression. Everything else. Very low expression. But if you look at this anti-anti-response, then only this one, high expressor, has no anti-anti-response, no anti-anti-response. And the, without microRNA de detargeting, you have a very high anti-anti-response. So this is effective. And then we're trying to figure out it's whether innate immunity play a role. The answer is not. And then we look into if we use uh, rack one mice and knock out the T and the B cells, we don't see difference. And then we use a T cell only deficiency, we don't see difference, uh, B cell deficiency, we don't see difference. Only one we see difference is when you have a T cell lockout, suggesting T cell play a critical role in this process. And then we did uh, tetramer staining and definitely showing that microRNA binding site can reduce transgene specific uh, T cell response. So the conclusion here is the microRNA binding site can reduce AA and ADA. It's because it can blunt in transient specific T cell and cause a muting of a B cell driven ADA. So the question is how this work. So we are looking into first in the blood, looking at a cytokine, inflammatory cytokine response. We see huge difference. And then we isolate spleen to stimulation Again, we see huge difference in inflammatory cytokines. Uh, and then we look at uh, the, uh, uh, the TNF alpha in the spleen by, by PCR, and then we see huge difference. And we also looking at core stimulatory uh, molecules, and we see huge difference. So the conclusion here is uh, micron detargeting accomplished reduced uh, ADA by down-regulating production of inflammatory cytokines and cold stimulatory signals in dendritic cells. So then we ask, what about functionality of those T cells? Perform this in vivo CTL, and then what we found is that definitely you, once you uh, add a microRNA binding site, this in vivo CTL specific killing is dramatically reduced. You have a constant uh, expression of the ova, and then we look at injecting muscle, and then we see, we try to look at inflammation as well as a CD4 infiltrates, and conclusion here, those blue, this green are uh, CD, uh, CD8 uh, positive cells, and you see dramatic reduction with and without, without my, um, microRNA binding sites. And then we also, if there's a, a CTL, whether there's a, a clearance on the muscle fiber, so we did quantify the vector genome. We see dramatic reduction in the muscle uh, um, without the binding site. With the binding site, we have persistent muscle vector genome. 
And then whether this is the functionality, uh, will, will uh, Micron 142 uh, kind of a defect, this functionality of a CTL will use a tumor model, T cell lymphoma express OVA, and then we inject into virus and then look, measure the, a, a, measure the tumor size. And then what you can see here, once you add in micron binding site, the CTL start to work and kill the tumors will be grow uh, bigger. And if you use original OVA, tumor will be completely inhibited. So this tells you this micron binding site uh, defect the functionality of, of the uh, transgene. So conclusion here is this process accomplished by attenuate transgene specific uh, function, functional CTL and a CD8 T cell infiltration and the clearance of the muscle fiber. So this is about micron binding sites. And I want to summarize the, in the following uh, uh, statement. So endogenous APC specific micron A regulate AAV holds potential for the reduction of uh, ADA. And the micron immediate reduction of ADA is accomplished by blunting transient specific T and B cells and down regulating inflammatory cytokines and core stimulatory signals in DC and attenuating functional CTL and CD8 T cell infiltration as well as clearance of a muscle fiber. So that's one strategy. And then we also work on from a capsule point of view and start using AAV8 for this transduction, because initially we used the AV1, a muscle-efficient muscle vector. So it is known by liver transduction, AV8 can accomplish immune tolerance. And this study done by uh, Roland Herzog, Jim Wilson, they demonstrated that it could be through Treg, hepatocyte Treg, as well as Cooper cells, and a poor APC transduction and T cell exhaustion. But our question is, can muscle-injected AAV induce immune tolerance and overcome ADA? And what are the mechanisms for this process? So we first test the AAV8 and to see whether we can establish immune tolerance. As you can see here, basically, use, doesn't matter you give IV or IM, AAV8 can accomplish immune tolerance, but not AAV1. And then we look, continue looking at uh, by uh, OVA expression, uh, uh, actually, this is a, we change the promoter. Even by muscle delivery, we put a liver specific promoter. We can see liver specific promoter by muscle injection also can accomplish the immune tolerance. And the reason for that is easy because if you do AV1, AV8 by ubiquitous promoter the, as, as this uh, firefly loose surface, by AV1 only focusing in the muscle, AV8 after muscle injection, a lot of, many uh, of those virus uh, spill into circulation and transduce uh, liver cells. But if you use a TBG promoter, even you give by muscle, all the virus only express in liver. And so conclusion here is, the mechanism here is spilling into circulation and a hepatic transduction. This is a, a mechanism to need uh, immune tolerance. And then, with this available, we want to see what's the exact role of uh, liver transduction. We put liver-specific spe micron A binding site, MIR-122, and then once you can see, once you add in this, then AV8 lost the function of high-level expression and generate a high level of the anti-anti response. So it tells you liver transduction is essential. And then we did a complicated uh, 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 redosing so you basically do IV initially with AV1 or AV8, and the second injection either by IM or IV with AV8 of AV1. The bottom line is, if you do AV8 injection first, it doesn't matter liver or muscle, you, ha you can have a redosing effect and continue uh, enhanced expression. But if you start with AV1, this function will last. So the bottom line is that the AAV8 is, uh, really can uh, uh, generate immune tolerance and can accomplish redosing. Okay, so what is the mechanism? So we first look into uh, regular, uh, so we did this expression and with uh, MIR uh, 122 uh, as a control. So oh, with a TBG, I'm sorry, TBG as, uh, as a control versus CB promoter. And, and then what we found is that after using TBG, we have uh, increase expression and uh, eliminate uh, of the antibody. 
And then by, by tetramer staining, you can see uh, tremendous differences here. And if you look at uh, the regular T cell, and uh, uh, this is a <coughs> look into regular T and regular B cells, you can see this liver expression by this promoter is very powerful. And then we start looking to any other cytokines play a role. So we did this experiment on muscle injection harvest liver and look at the PCR array, we identify this quadrum that several molecules play the major role there, and then we confirm by qPCR. So bottom line is this is a, a mechanism, a potential mechanism for uh, um, AAV8 uh, tolerance. So in summary, AAV8 can reduce, uh, induce uh, immune tolerance and the whole promise for ADA reduction. And hepatic transduction is essential for AA media intolerance. And the Treg, Treg, and also down regulation of some hepatic cytokines may be involved. And finally, I would like to thank my lab people and my longtime collaborator uh, Michael Fazan, who is in the audience, and uh, Ron DeRoches, who is not here, and uh, George Church's lab. Thank you. So it's been, it's been fascinating to watch the microRNA and the targeting, detargeting story evolve. To what degree, for those of us who are maybe a little bit more application focused, to what degree is this, you know, kind of turnkey ready to go, you know, like can we have our tissue of interest and, you know, find the list of microRNAs and just plug it and go, or is this something that really is taking a lot of optimization for each particular application? That's first, I think the answer is yes. And also I want to let you know. Which Ron, one? Ron DeRoches, <laughs> Ron DeRoches used a MIR 142 and a MIR 126 uh, migraine detargeting generate this Miami monkey. So you think that, I mean, if I've got something I want to do in a, in a neuron or, you know, yeah. I mean, to what degree? Neuron is more difficult. Okay, yeah. Yeah, neuron yeah, is definitely yeah, yeah. more okay. difficult. All right. but, we'll but, talk. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. Thank you. But uh, if you combine microRNA A with immunotolerogenic uh, uh, virus such as AV8 and AV9, you may get good effect. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Mike? <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> So, so one of the things we're not looking at uh, in the animals that we're trying to reduce our ADA is the level of pre-existing T cell responses to the capsid. Not we always screen for seropositivity. It can be done. You it see can that be spot. Would it, it, as far as you, it can be done. Would it uh, be helpful in uh, limiting? So, if we excluded those animals that did not have that that had a pre-existing T cell response to the capsid, would that be helpful and give us a you know? better results. Personally, I believe that will be. Yeah. Yeah, actually two, <laughs> sorry. So can you remind us about the subtype of DC, which is the, mo the subtype of dendritic cell, which played the most important uh, role in, in what you have seen? And the other thing is, um, if we do microRNA, on one hand, we get down the expression. But what we don't change, of course, is the tropism, which also contributes on one hand to the dose, which we lose because of, of target transduction, and maybe even also to immune response due to just the antigenic load and yeah. entry into Great other question. cells. Great question. Thank you. So about the first one, uh, in terms of our capsid uh, specific tropism, uh, yeah, that's, that's very critical. That's why we start looking to alternative to AV1, such as AV8. And the second question is what cell types, uh, antigen presenting cell type play a role? We tested uh, both uh, uh, microphage as, and, and another, another classic antigen presenting cell, dendritic cells. In both cases, I think uh, at least in vitro, it's effective. We are doing single cell sequencing right now in, in mouse liver to sort out what cell types really play playing a role there and maybe multiple cell types. Thank you. <laughs>